is Davis King. I have been participating in the life of First Church since 2006, joined in 2009. So my roots start before I was born. I mean, I was born into a family that the church was not an option. It's hard not to, to discuss the first challenge to my faith, which was the sickness and illness and, and death of my mother when, when I was young. Um, because that, that definitely plays a part in my faith story. I was uh, 11 when she got sick and 18 when she passed away. And I would have to say that the church did its job. And I wonder uh, if it hadn't at that crucial time in my life, uh, if I would still be willing to be part of church today. They were there. The church was there when it needed to be. That experience then is such a part of where I am now and why I am where I am now. And as difficult as that was, I don't know that I'd change it. I can reflect on the season and find great beauty and even a little bit of joy. And one of the best examples I can give is, is when I've had the opportunity to be there for somebody else going through the same thing. I realize in those moments that I couldn't be there being for somebody else, uh, what somebody was for me years before, had I not had that loss. And not that it makes the loss any less of a loss, it makes it into something different. It r resurrects it into something new. It takes death and turns it into hope. Um, I always knew that when I needed to figure something out, that I could find the answers at a church someplace. Um, and so, uh, being in Austin, I got to a point where I knew I needed to go to a place where I could figure some stuff out. Um, and uh, that happened to be here. Uh, as you mentioned, I, I took a class at seminary. I looked into going to seminary further, and in, in the process of that, um, my friend started having kids. Uh, my sister had kids. And I had people telling me that I was really good with kids. Um, comments that I, I, I felt strange even in hearing or receiving. Like, I remember helping my sister work out something with one of her kids, and she said, wow, I don't think I would have come up with that way of dealing with that. Um, here's a weird one. Having friends offer, tell me that I needed to be a father and offer to carry a child for me. I thought that was a pretty good endorsement. <laughs> and I think that told me something, and that's about the time that I, I felt like I needed to explore that a little bit and and I I explored that I told I, Laura Green and I had a conversation and so at, at first I explored um, the idea of you know finding a surrogate and actually having a child because that seemed appealing for some reason um, but in the meantime my, the conversation that I had with Laura was that you know I should spend some time with working with the kids um, and I think the really the first thing I did was to um, volunteer for VBS. That experience reinforced for me the, those comments that people had made. I could now see what other people saw. Wow. <laughs> I think that's, that's the key. I could, I could now see what other people had told me that I didn't quite believe yet. Right. I, my first volunteering summer at VBS, there was a con confirmation that I'm good with kids. Kids like me respond to me. So I don't know where that's coming from. I, I really, if I had to tell you why, I don't know why. I didn't practice at it. It just kind of, I showed up for that first VBS and it all came out, right? The unexpected talent, right? The surprise is what it felt like. Those comments led to further exploration of that by um, taking an open position at the preschool uh, here at the pump 
shout out for Frump. Where at every turn, I kept finding more and more reinforcement. The idea of going to seminary, that was coming from somewhere in here. There was an element of control of that that was me. The, the, the childcare and the um, idea of becoming a parent, would it sound too weird to say I don't feel like I'm in control of it? <laughs> <laughs> certainly won't be when there are children living with me, right? I have so much in the way of supporting loving people, financial stability, uh, a home, a family that cares for me. Uh, I have so much of this, and I have the ability to pursue things that are not about um, putting food on my table. I can do something with my time that's about something other than me and my life. And what to do about that and how to use that time. Um, and where that comes from is all of the exploration of my faith. Um, one of my favorite stories that we've discussed recently is the rich young ruler, you know, because he who went away sad because he had much stuff. I kind of felt like that guy, you know, I felt asked to sell all and didn't know how to, what that really meant for me, you know. Um, did that mean literally selling everything or did that mean rededicating those things to something other than myself and finding ways to do that and couple that with the idea of children that that would be a possible way to open up my home and my resources um, to something outside of myself. So a real watershed moment um, for that was about a year ago last October, this past October, I went to a Travis County um, information session about foster parenting. The data that they presented left me convinced that I could do something and that that left me no more excuses, right? That, you know, I couldn't complain that I stuttered or that I, <laughs> or that I was too old or anything like that. I, I, I had been faced with the uh, sad truth that children need homes in, in our state in this in the world and don't have them and coupled with the fact that I could provide that and I couldn't pull the two apart anymore it doesn't mean that I didn't try to think of a lot of reasons not to I had that thought of I'm single there's nobody to go tag your it to when things are getting a little too heated but uh, every time I thought about those obstacles I thought about the people around me that could support me here in this community and, and uh, others. So uh, I went through weeks of training, six hours every Saturday. And after that, and a number of people coming to my house and making sure everything was cool, that it wasn't a fire hazard or that I actually had running water. And, um, and after hours of interviews with me, uh, I am licensed by the state to be a foster parent and have uh, been working with a few kids at Helping Hand Home Treatment Center. I have asked to have one of those kids come and live in my home. How do I feel about that? When people ask me about it, um, I'm excited about it. When I'm thinking about it at home at night by myself, it's a little nerve wracking. Yeah. Have I noticed God and all of that? Um, I notice God in, in the part that I'm not in control of. There's just a certain part of this that doesn't have my need to manage it on it. A certain part of this experience that is coming from somewhere I can't quite tell you where, or from some influence that I can't quite 
put a word to. Um, and I think that's what we call God. Or maybe the Holy Spirit. <laughs>